My name is Michał Czołczek. My name is Mariusz Wojakowski. And we want to give a talk about tracing of large scale uh, actor systems. You can follow slides on tinyurl.com slash lambda 2018 tracing. And a little about us. Uh, I've graduated at AGH, uh, University of Science Technology, la just last year and have uh, my degree at, uh, on computer science. I work as an engineer at Evidence Prime, where I work on uh, healthcare decision tools. And after work, I am play World of Warcraft uh, very often, so <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I'm a computer science apprentice. I also got an education at AJH University of Science and Technology. And currently I'm gathering experience at Allegro, a e commerce company, where I'm working on advertisement platform. And after work, uh, yeah, I, I like to read paper about distributed systems. So if you want to talk about that later, we can. <laughs> Louder, okay. Okay. Okay, so who has heard about actor systems? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so we are thinking whether to include that slide or not. If, so if there is any possibility that someone haven't heard about that, now it's probably not the best moment to say that out loud. <laughs> but to make sure we're on the same page, uh, we'll go through it very quickly. So actor model is a mathematical model for concurrent computation. Actor is treated as a computation primitive. It can it process stuff locally. It can have an isolated state, which could be mutated by messages. Yes, so actor can talk with each other only by sending messages asynchronously. Uh, there is no rigid connection. There is no shared memory. Also, actors can create uh, other actors and form some kind of supervision hierarchy, delegate work, and gather results. They can also change their behavior and decide how to respond to the next message. So motivation for this model was to run on highly parallel machines and high sp with high-speed networks, so everything fits together perfectly. Okay, so let's dive in into this uh, scenario. Let's suppose that uh, we have an HTTP server uh, that is uh, actually modeled with actors. And let's suppose that the user here sends an HTTP request to change some user privileges to one of the users of the application. So the socket handler uh, you know, uh, reads uh, from the TCP uh, uh, the raw request and passes it to the request parser, which parses the, the request and sends it to the router. Well, uh, someone who was implementing the router uh, did something wrong and it escaped uh, the test. So unfortunately, this request uh, is a bit malformed and uh, when it's passed to the user service, uh, which sends then a query with malformed data uh, to the user DB service, and uh, well, because it is malformed uh, during the query execution, the database rejects this request, and uh, it manifests as an exception on the user DB service actor. But the real cause of the problem was because the router implementation was uh, not well done. And how can we detect the real cause of such errors? So our solution is to collect traces. So what are these traces? We can think of them as flow of messages through actors. Here on the right side, you can see one possible visualization of that. Uh, and uh, what this visualiz visualization depicts. So vertices depicts actors, uh, which happen to communicate. Uh, then arrows show arrows between vertices show a uh, communication channel, message passed from one actor to another, and also we have arrows from nowhere, so for example, HTTP requests in coming to your system is generated outside, so the first actor servicing the request receive message, and we also want to collect that message. So basically a trace, track responses uh, of the system to incoming messages. Right. So we've designed a, a Scala library, which uh, enables us to trace messages uh, in ACA toolkit. And uh, the overall library architecture, uh, well, the library is split into three main parts. Uh, the tracing library core, which contains mainly uh, 
classes to parse uh, the configuration and to just set up the, the, the library. Uh, and uh, as a PT plugin, which uh, enables us to generate an aspect, uh, which then instruments the code uh, of our library, and the collector, uh, which uh, collects the messages uh, passed between uh, actors and saves them to a database. Uh, in this case, it is CarsDB. Uh, and we have some very, very simple visualization tool which enabled us to just see the traces uh, and it's quite working so <laughs> yeah. okay so next slide show so very high level about how it works so okay this uh, big light round the big light blue rounded rectangle is our trace application and there are also actors that that we want that we want to trace so the first thing we have to do is to define config at dependencies and for example define credential to the da database and stuff like this second one we, we don't have to do it manually uh, the sbt plugins run on compile phase so it's, gen it's generating aspect uh, that is that is added to our 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 source code uh, then aspect uh, aspect add one more instruction to our send message in traced actors that passes messages to, to collector so every every message that is uh, that that actor is processing is passed to the collector and how it's how it's possible we have uh, we have additional trade that is mixed to the to the actors that we want to trace, and this you use idea of correlation ID. So we want to join these traces and put them into into collector. All right. It was simple when we have a one node, but when we move to a distributed environment, it was uh, there was a problem how to collect the data from all the different nodes uh, in this system, so we could uh, see the whole trace and not just uh, some part of it uh, that is on a one node and not on another. Uh, so uh, the idea was very simple. We have uh, local instances of databases on each node of the uh, of the actor system that we are tracing, and uh, this uh, database, uh, the database that was chosen was CouchDB because of its efficient replication protocol, and uh, the fact that the CouchDB replicates uh, data only in one way. And it, this is exactly what we want to achieve that, uh, there. So we have the central database. It can be also clustered, but for the simplicity of, of, of this picture, we just showed it uh, as one node. And we replicate all the data from local instances to, the, to this uh, central database. OK, uh, so as the title uh, of the presentation was tracing of large scale actor systems. So we wanted to uh, prove that this solution is scalable. And as a test application that we traced, uh, we chose a traffic simulation. Uh, the basic idea is that city is divided into areas and every actor processes traffic inside uh, of such area. And communication happens only between neighbors. Uh, so uh, you can uh, see the city split as a grid. So only between the nearest uh, neighbors, there is a communication. And uh, we send messages about uh, incoming and outgoing traffic and uh, free space uh, on the road. And uh, the, re uh, the very important reason why this, was uh, this application was chosen it was because it generates a very large amount of messages. Uh, and also worth noting that it is an example of microscopic simulation, so every car is simulated on its own. Okay, so the first set of tests, we wanted to assess whether, whether uh, what is the scalability of the library. So it measured the impact of the library on the traced system performance. It occurred that the average library overhead, uh, so the loss of the FPS of the simulation, was, was about 40%. The overhead is quite high, but the test showed that despite the FPS loss, the library has still proved to be scalable with the amount of nodes in the system. Uh, so you can see on the, on the graph that the trend, trend lines are nearly parallel. 
So it also means that the, uh, the uh, tracing library is not affecting the uh, scalability of the application it's, uh, that it's being traced, and it's a very important thing. Okay, we also performed a second set of tests, uh, which uh, checked whether the library is uh, coping well when the number of messages were increasing. Uh, we achieved it uh, with sampling, so uh, at first uh, we set the probability if whether the message uh, was going to be collected uh, or not, and we increased it from 0% to 100. And as we can see, uh, it is nearly linear scaling between 0% and uh, about 90%. Uh, but at 100%, uh, the uh, when this probability was set to 100%, there, there is a uh, high increase uh, of the overhead. Uh, we suspect that it is something connected with CouchDB, uh, that we are reaching some limit uh, of this database, but uh, we are not quite sure what really is causing the, 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 these problems. And of course, overheads were measured in percentages of FPS loss. Okay, so what we have done, we have created Scala, a Scala library for collecting traces in Akka Toolkit. Uh, we have tested the performance of the tool on a real application. It was a traffic simulation. The average performance loss was about 39 to 45 percentages in uh, frames per second. And uh, we've proven, at least more or less, uh, the solution is scalable uh, when the no number of nodes were increasing. We tested it to about 50 nodes. And uh, well, it, we nearly proved that the solution is scalable with the num when the number of messages are increasing. And what is very important, there's, we haven't uh, seen any impact on scalability of the test simulation. Of course, uh, it, I don't mean that we haven't seen that the uh, performance of such simulation was uh, worse, because as, as we showed you, it was worse. But uh, it didn't affect the scalability of it. Okay, so uh, future work. So future directions, I think, Okay, so initial phase was to show how this tool works, so we needed to create visualization tool, and it was very simple and it works on, on local database. So I we think that it's good to have nice visualization tool that uh, can handle great amount of, of messages and traces. Uh, other thing that we that probably it's good to good to have is additional uh, additional statistics to allow to track more precisely overhead, so for example, latency processing time. It allows to create, for example, more sophisticated mechanisms like turning off the collecting uh, when the cluster is overloaded. Also, how we can use this collected tracer because um, traces are good, but what for? Uh, so, for example, length of paths. Uh, when traces suddenly becoming significantly shorter or longer, it could indicate a problem. Depends on the situation, it could be useful to, to for example, trigger an alert to, to the admin or, or kind of SRE team uh, that something bad could be happening to the system. Also, vertices degree, we can provide uh, insights about potential bottlenecks in the system. So, for example, actor generates great amount of load due to specific uh, specific message, and for example, we can now try to optimize that. Also, uh, histogram on numerical values from messages, distribution of messages type. Uh, we can think of that as unique fingerprint of the of the health status of the system. So, yeah, we can do something on that information. And also, another tools that we can use our trace, for example, data mining, machine learning, yeah. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, the library is released on GitHub as an open source. You can view it uh, via following this link. Uh, but uh, we haven't uh, finished the documentation part, so we're sorry very, very much about that. Uh, but it will happen soon, so I guess that you can visit it any, anytime. Thank you very much. Thank you. So did you look at the causes of the performance overhead of your library? 
Uh, what exactly do you mean? Uh, no, I mean that uh, 30 or 40 percent of the okay. overhead. Uh, did well, you did you look? Did you check what what caused it? Well, uh, because the message, uh, messages that are being passed between actors are processed twice. Because first, uh, it is processed by our collector, which checks if, if it is, should be, uh, you know, put into database. We mentioned the sampling, uh, and then uh, it, uh, you know, is being processed by the collector to, to you know, serialize it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is one of the things that this is uh, causing some overhead. And uh, well, and then it is processed by the actor system normally how it would be. Uh, and the second one, uh, we think that there is something not uh, quite right with the way that uh, CouchDB saves the, saves this uh, onto disk onto disk. I don't know what is exactly causing this problem, but I suspect that this is the, the, the cause. Uh, we will ch check it, uh, change database to something else, and and uh, check if I'm correct. Or maybe I, I did something wrong with implementation, but well, I suspect CouchDB is causing much of the problem. That's what I suspected. As well. okay. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to ask about that SBT plugin uh, yes. you use for creating aspect. Uh, you wrote it by yourself or you use something existing? We wrote it uh, ourselves. So we create a template for aspect and then SBT plugin generating this aspect into our, uh, our code, so into the trace application. Yeah. It is uh, written in the, um, as a managed source and it is then compiled by, by the SBT. Thank you. More questions? So on this visualization tool that you have, uh, how do you represent time? Like, do you do that or? Because well, I've only seen actors as nodes, right? And messages as edges. Where's yes, time? Uh, we don't have, on, on, this, on this tool, we don't uh, visualize when these me messages uh, were uh, either received or sent, so uh, we don't have this feature on it, but it is saved uh, to the database. So this, uh, s you know, the information is I I in these traces, but it is not uh, on the visualization. You mean that you record uh, time, but you do not uh, visualize? Yeah. Yes. Because I would suggest to have, you know, the the usual straight lines, just sending messages, then pass on time, then receiving messages. Okay, we wanted to do something slightly different than, for example, Zipkin or how to come and try to collect and show that, uh, show the metrics. That, so this is trace and we can measure the time, but we wanted to specifically uh, focus on, for example, messages passed and how, how long is the path and what actors are, are while processing that. So, yeah, it can be done, but it's a slightly different... Yeah, I mean, but, but this is basically just recording information on the relation between actors. Right. Yes. Like, if you send a message, then you are related. Yes. You, since it, you yes. do not have time, if you send only one message or thousand, then you will have the same, right? Yes. So unless, unless your visualization works over time, then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So we uh, mentioned that it is uh, one of the future work that we should work on the, on the better visualization tool. And I think that your suggestions are very welcome uh, uh, in, in our okay, work. Thank you. Thank you. Can you dynamically switch it on and off or, for example, trace messages originating only from one specific actor? Without uh, turning off the system? Yeah. Uh, no. Right now. Right now, no. But, but, but you can configure it. You can configure it to capture uh, messages only from specific uh, actors. So it, it, is, it is possible, but not without uh, restarting the actor system. 